Northern California's Sierra Mountains. Made famous in 1849 with the cry, there's gold in them thar hills. But the gold rush was short-lived. And by the turn of the century, the familiar cry of the Sierras had become timber. Mining camps were converted into sawmills. Narrow gauge rails were laid. And the virgin forests of the Sierra Mountains were about to become the lumber industry's last frontier. Within a few short years, lumberjacks had pushed deep into the forest of the Sierra Mountains. Spurs off the main railroad's line were laid to the cutting sites, and the geared locomotives hauled the raw timber down the track to the mill. The Pickering Lumber Corporation's mill was outside of Standard, California. And just over a mountain, the West Side Lumber Company operated out of Tuolumne. At their peak, these mills each turned out up to 45 million board feet of lumber a year enough to build 3,700 seven-room houses. For moving the logs and lumber, these two lumber companies used the Shea and Heisler locomotives. The Shea's three-cylinder engine drove the horizontal shaft running down the entire right side of the locomotive. This drive shaft equally distributed the power to each geared wheel. Jays quickly became a favorite of rail enthusiasts because of their rapid rhythmic exhaust and their unusual offset boiler, which balanced the weight of the vertical engine. The very first oil-fired Shea was a 55-ton two-truck built in 1902 and was originally used by the Sierra Railway. The four-truck Shays became standard by 1903. By the late 1940s, the main lines from both mills had pushed as far as 70 miles back into the Central Sierras. But remarkably, they never went beyond an 18-mile crow's flight from their starting point. With an additional 250 miles of logging spurs, these companies had built the longest, if not the crookedest, logging railroads in the world. The Pickering and West Side Lumber Companies used nearly 500 logging cars to transport the heavy raw timber. Although both lumber operations used flat cars, the skeleton car was the undisputed favorite. A skeleton car was built with two pairs of four-wheel trucks, spaced about 15 feet apart, which were joined by a heavy beam of oak or pine. A cross beam straddled each truck. Chocks on each end of the cross beam prevented the lower tier of logs from rolling. Axes were all but a nostalgic memory. The efficient, if noisy, chainsaw became the preferred instrument for felling trees. Once a tree was dropped, it was stripped and cut into shorter lengths. The logs were skidded to a loading site by a caterpillar tractor. Horses and donkey engines used to take care of this part of the operation. But like the steam locomotive, they ultimately didn't survive progress. Refinements in heavy equipment during World War II revolutionized how the logging industry moved raw timber and hauled it to the mill. By the 50s, diesel-powered cranes loaded the logs. Diesel trucks, not steam engines, hauled the logs down to the spur railhead. The donkey steam engine was the workhorse of any logging operation. The donkey was a self-powered steam plant using a system of winches and cable drums. Donkeys were originally used just in skidding logs from the woods, but they were quickly adapted to many uses. In the old days of spur logging, 
A typical operation consisted of a single spool Dolbeer donkey engine skidding the logs by cable from where they were felled and bucked, either directly to the spur or to a chute that led to it. Tremendously heavy loads carried by these logging cars were held in place with chains. On sharp curves and steep inclines, loads would shift, derailing cars and even whole trains. Other dangers encountered by logging trains included broken rails or failed brakes. The greatly feared runaway train was a fairly common occurrence. Many men lost their lives in runaway wrecks. The logging companies in the Sierras chose the Shea geared locomotives because they were unparalleled for traction. They could outpull Heislers by twice as much. Many locomotive experts believe the Shea was the most powerful steam locomotive design ever conceived. Shea's were the preferred choice in rugged mountain logging operations, since they could easily negotiate the light rail, the uneven roadbed, grades of up to 14%, and the sharp S-curves of the Sierra lines. Economy was the byword of an efficient logging operation, so the shortest, cheapest routes were chosen often following natural drainages and using timber trestles that were vulnerable to fire. Logging lines were by necessity much more flexible than common carrier lines because they were constantly being pulled and rebuilt in virgin stands of timber. Curves up to 60 degrees were common. The steep grades would permit the powerful Shea to pull only 19 cars at a time. In the very early days, the engines burned wood, but this proved too costly and oftentimes sparks caused fires. Consequently, the engines were converted to oil. Once the cars reached the mill, they were uncoupled and switched to the log pond siding. Powerfully torqued Heisler engines were worked year-round, switching at the mill and at the interchange. Heisler geared locomotives were not as fast as the Shea engine, but they proved ideal for the mill yard because of their flexibility on rough track. The V-cylinder configuration allowed the pistons to make up to two and a half more power pulses than a traditional rod engine, providing the power and torque needed to maneuver the heavy log cars. Note that this Heisler's truck wheels and tender wheels are all linked with driving rods. Engine number 10 was a 78-ton, three-truck, narrow-gauge Heisler, built in 1912. The number 10 met the fate of the vast majority of geared steam engines. Today, she can be found scrapped in a Stockton, California junkyard. 
Engine number 10 is pulling a water tank, which eliminated many water stops. At the log pond siding, the logs were positioned and unchained for dumping. At the Pickering Mill, donkey engines pushed the loads into the log pond. Westside Lumber used the more traditional cable system to unload their cars. The empty cars were then spotted, uncoupled, and moved to a siding for the return trip up the mountain. Logs were jockeyed in the holding pond and guided onto a loading ramp. The logs were hauled up a conveyor where loose bark and debris were removed on their way into the sawmill. Once in the mill, the rock timber was cut to length. From the cut logs, large band saws cut boards of various sizes. A 750 horsepower Corliss steam engine drove the saws. The green lumber was then conveyed to the planing mill to be finished. Finished lumber was then sorted by grade and dimension and stacked to be moved to the drying yard. The Pickering lumber operation used this unusual monorail conveyor to haul the timber out to the drying stacks. The cured lumber was inspected and loaded into empty boxcars for shipment and distribution. The loaded boxcars were spotted on the Sierra Railroad's tracks. They were hauled to Oakdale, California. In Oakdale, the lumber shipment was transferred to the Southern Pacific Main Line.
Sierra Railroad's number 38, a 2662 Baldwin, was built in 1934. She weighed 293,000 pounds and was the Sierra's heaviest locomotive. Ultimately, new roads and diesel trucks made steam engine logging obsolete. The timber could be trucked directly from the cutting site to the mill at a substantial savings over the same haul that used a 19-car train. Profits dropped off sharply in the late 50s, and the West Side Lumber operation was purchased by Pickering Lumber. By 1961, Pickering Lumber Company ended all its train logging operations. A 1963 fire closed the mill for good. After more than half a century of men shouting voices, of saw blades singing, of tall trees crashing, of steam whistles calling, the Sierras were quiet again. What was once a way of life, the logging railroads of the Sierras has become a bygone era. And the sights and sounds once so familiar to these mountains are only memories to us now.